questions, you can interrupt. However, if you do have questions that are relevant to the presentation that may be covered a little bit later, just flip them into the chat. We'll ask the questions uh, of Mike in the chat afterwards. And once again, I'd like to thank Mark Hart, who is acting as my co-host, watching the door, doing the recording, doing all the technical stuff that I am totally inept at doing. Thank you for uh, coming in. So it's nine o'clock and we're going to get started. Uh, Mike, can you just wave your hand so everybody knows where you are? Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Mike Sikorsky. Uh, Mike has been calling since the early 1970s, I believe, possibly before that, but uh, at least according to his biography, his first full dance by himself solo was in 1972 in California. Um, and Mike is known for one of his most renowned comments because he used square dance calling to put himself through university and is quipped the phrase, well, it sure as hell beats flipping burgers. Uh, Mike is a singer, a songwriter, a recording artist for both popular country music and for square dance music. Uh, he's directed production shootings for genre artists like Toby Keith, for those of you that know Toby Keith, uh, as well as his own uh, music and production videos. Mike is an accredited caller, caller lab coach, caller, teacher. He's recorded on Dance Ranch, Blue Star, Rawhide, Hi-Hat, Square Tunes, Global, Bogan, Elite, and probably many others as well as being the owner and producer of his own label, which is Mesa Apache Productions. Uh, he's also the recording artist of my favorite record, uh, which is uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky on 4 Bar B, but that's a different story. About 10 years ago, Mike published um, his own defined method of patter calling, which is called the Activator Stream Method. Uh, and a, there's now a second volume out to that total encyclopedia of knowledge. Uh, uh, I'm not going to try and take too much away, but the essence of it is, is where one sequence of calls sets you up in a formation, which is an activation position, I guess. And that leads to up to 10 different options that you can call from that. It's very similar to module building on module, but it's not. It's very different. But what it does, it gives you an almost unlimited amount of possibility and exponential variations of sequences and combinations without getting lost. Uh, and that's the method that uh, I've asked Mike to talk about today. So uh, please, everybody, welcome Mike Sikorsky. Well, thank you. I want to thank all of you for being here for the session today. Uh, the activator stream system it, it is something that should be considered an additional tool in your toolbox. It's not meant to replace anything but it will help you spice up your choreography with things that can now be called that you would not normally call resolution points that you would not consider a resolution point and and the dancers don't see it as a resolution point so let's, uh, let's do this. okay now so what is an activator it's a module with a variable in it and the mo that module exists at the core of every activator. So what is a stream? A sequence of calls within the activator stream system. We'll use a starter to get us into the activator box. You can do one, two, three, how many or no activators. And then you will have a get out, which we will call the always get out, get out because of the same four call get out works for all of them. And the other dancers will end up back home. Just a quick thing about formation arrangements, sequence and relationship phaser, because that is all required for normal module calling to, to have a true corner box or the old term I use a lot, zero box. Okay, so that would be on the left picture. And let's look and see what we have here in that we have the formation, which is an eight chain through. I refer to it as end to end boxes because it helps us see the activator box a little better. We also have the arrangement, which is standard couples. The dancers are all in sequence, which we'll show a little later with a nice display uh, with Janet's magic she's done with this program. And the relationship is the outsides are paired with their original partner. The centers are back to back with their original partner. Everybody is facing their original corner. Now, if you look at the look at the right, we have taken that zero box and had everybody do a touch a quarter and roll. 
or a pass through and a U-turn back. Either way, corners have changed places. This is not a zero box, but it is an activator box because it'll, the only th what's required is the eight chain through, everybody's facing their corner and every dancer is in sequence. So we're gonna use activator number one, which is step to a right or left wave, turn any fraction or don't, then always call the next four calls. Centers trade, centers run, Ferris wheel, and centers pass through. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use activator one with the five quarters disguised fraction. And that is, we're gonna to touch a quarter, that's a quarter turn. We're gonna scoot back, that's another two wall turn. We're gonna scoot back again, that's another two wall turn, that's five quarters. After that, we do the next four calls and we'll be in an activator box again. Now you'll see this is an activator box, but now they're looking at head walls instead of side walls and I'm sorry. Ah, okay, good. Now she's reminding me of a special graphic we're gonna do right here. Notice that this is not the same type of activator box as before because we have same sexes paired. That constantly changing arrangement that is still a resolution point where you can connect activator to activator to activator and get out, that provides a lot of variety in your calling without increasing the difficulty. Now we talked last week or the week before about symmetry and for some that's kind of hard to see. We're gonna show you a line of what you wanna look for. These are the head ladies, number one lady, number three lady. You, if you can connect those two ladies with a line that goes through the very center of the square, they are in symmetry with each other. Now we check the other two ladies, two and four, that should be in symmetry. And it's important to know this because if you look at a square and one square is in symmetry and one isn't, the dancers created their own variation. Now, the head men, you see that line goes through the center of the square. Side men, it goes through the center of the square. This activator box, like any other activator box, all dancers are in symmetry. And I just said that, but that's not, not always true of the activator box because we can easily do non-symmetrics in a very simple way. We'll show that later. So we look at the, we look at the choreography on the, oh, okay. Now, the, the box on the right, we're gonna use the activator box on the left and from there, we're gonna do a left touch a quarter, a center's trade, a center's run, Ferris wheel and center's pass through. And now we're back looking at sidewalls again with the half sashayed activator box. So they're paired with a girl now, not same sex paired. Now, to show if the dancers are in sequence, your mind's eye needs to step to the center of the square, the flagpole center of the square, and Jenna put a flag there for you. Now, we look for the number one lady. Where is she? Okay, so there's a star there. Now, we should be able to go counterclockwise. That's why I call run the bases. We're going to second base. That's the number two lady. Continue around the clock, counterclockwise. There's number three. And then come to the number four lady, and the ladies are in sequence. Let's find the number one man. Number one man. Let's continue counterclockwise, running the bases. There's two. Let's find the number three man and the number four man. So they are all in sequence. You will learn to trust all of this about the activator system without even thinking about it. Yeah. No, oh, before we go to the next one, I want you to notice, we'll show you the always get out it's in a second that always works. But from certain activator boxes, you have special get outs you can use. See the half sashayed box here? Do you see that because we left the number one man in the Southwest quadrant and the number one lady in the Southeast quadrant, we can pass through and square your sets at home. We don't need to go through any other get out. The quick get outs like that after choreography that's different but not more difficult tends to create a wow. And if you do this, this kind of thing over and over again, mixed with your regular choreography, your dancers are gonna start going, wow, that's what you want. Now, 
This is the always get out. There's four calls. Look at the box on the left from any activator box, star through. Now in this case, it leaves them all facing out. Later in an example, it will not. But this one is. So when you say out facers partner trade, it's actually everybody in this case. And at that step, number two of four, you module callers that are familiar with this, you're looking at a corner line. You can switch out to a normal module if it works from the corner line and bring them back here. Continue with the always get out. You do a right and left through and a slide through. And in this case, you get out of man left in your home. You could say centers face in back up your home. Some nice get outs from here. There we go. All right, we're gonna take a look at some non-symmetric stuff. My, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot what the demo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What we did here, <laughs> I created this and she has to remind me what I'm doing. <laughs> the corner, we're in the left, the left picture, we're in the corner box with the sides active. We've squared them up and the sides did the pair off or the square through four, whatever it was. And in the box nearest the collar, the one at the bottom of the screen, I want you to notice they have done a box the nat. So it's, that's the way you asked it. The four dancers nearest the collar in each square box the nat or pass through and you turn back. They have to, have to change places. And I've, I've actually, if I didn't want a special thing, I've actually used this to say, if you and the person in front of you are sexy, change places. And no guy's gonna do it. Sometimes they all do it. Sometimes only a few do it. Anyway, uh, we're gonna check symmetry here. You've seen number four lady should be in symmetry with the number two lady and she's not. She's with the number three man. So they're not symmetrical. Neither are these dancers. Neither are these dancers, neither are these dancers. This is non-symmetry. Okay, so we're gonna use activator number one with a quarter right turn. So after the, the box the at, the pass through you turn back, second picture, everybody does a touch a quarter. Then everybody does a center's trade, every square, both waves. Now the centers do a run. You notice at after the run, we have one two-faced line that has the boys in the middle and one two-faced line that has the girls in the middle, non-symmetry. Ferris wheel, we're doing the same calls, activator number one. We did a Ferris wheel. And then we did a center's pass through. Look at the one on the right. We're in an activator box again, but the box on your left is half sashayed. The box on your right is standard. We're still in non-symmetry. This is an activator box. You could do another activator, but we're right now gonna do the always get out. The first call for the always get out is star through. So let's do that. Now you'll notice that the box on the left, the dancers are all facing out. The box on the right, the dancers are all facing in. We're still in non-symmetry. This is what fixes it. Second picture, out facers, partner trade. So it's only in the box on your left, are they doing it? Now you have your corner line halfway through the activator box. Everybody is normal. Your non-symmetry is fixed. They are all symmetrical now. You do a right and left through, you do a slide through, you have a zero corner box, you also have an activator box. And again, you have the activator box because, for, because the heads can face in and back up because of where the number one man is and the number one lady is in this activator box formation. Now, Anytime you call any corner box, and excuse me, let me rephrase that. Any get in from a squared set to a corner box 
is also an activator because that corner box is also an activator box. In the activator system, squared set to an activator box, we call a starter because it can take you to an activator box that is not a corner box. And this is a favorite one I use a lot. Heads pass through, separate around one to a line, pass through, wheel and deal, centers you turn back, and you'll have to trust me, we don't have the other graphics. This is where they finish. Now notice the specifics of this with the number one dancers. And all the other examples, and with much of our module choreography, the number one man works into and out of and back into the Southwest Quadrant. And the number one lady works to the Southeast Quadrant. They are in the quadrant diagonally opposite. So where we could say in the other situations, out of man left in your home, or in some cases, centers face in back up and your home. I think we did a pass through in your home. This is going to be get out right and left grand and your home. They're halfway across the square. A right and left grand will take them the other halfway around the square and put them home. So for this get out, yes, we could do the always get out. But because we have the boys on the outside and the girls in the middle and they're halfway across, we're going to do a touch a quarter and extend. So that's the next picture. There we go. Look at the picture on the left. They did a touch a quarter and extend. Now we're going to do a right and left grand. And the right and left grand takes us halfway around the square. It also, the command, as we know, changes any formation to a facing circle. So the outsides will automatically face. And when they finish the grand, they'll be in the They'll meet their partner sort of like what's shown on the right. And you can say after the grand, you say right and left grand, meet your partner and you are, and they all yell home. And it's a wow. We're gonna go on, we're gonna have questions a little later. You might jot some thoughts down. We can, because we can, we, what we can't show on the choreographic program we're gonna use or intaminations, we can't show the non-symmetrics, but we can show anything else. Let's go to the next. Okay. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go through the choreography. This is Bill Ackerman's SD caller. We tried Taminations and we typed five calls in. When we typed the sixth one, the program dumped and closed. That made me very unhappy. So we're going to use this. When you use SD caller, it's free. They'll snap to the ending position. This You have to have a couple start. This is heads. Now, we'll start from the beginning of the choreography because I created these all sequential from the la picture to picture to picture. Mike, so this you're, is you're still on your uh, PowerPoint. Did you want to bring SD caller up on the screen? Oops. I thought I did. Yeah, you have to stop share and then restart share with the SD caller. Okay. okay. If, if you go up to the little box that says stop share, there you go. Okay, you're up. Okay. This is SD caller. When you first open the program, you select the level or at the bottom it said all levels. So what is it, all levels? And then it comes in a squared set, but in this program you have to activate two of the couples. So we said heads start, it was the first selection on the left. Now we're gonna type in square through four. And you see, it's like the heads pair off, they did a square through. Our next call was everybody boxed on that. And you see there is the half sachet activator box that we showed in the first part of the presentation. I want you to notice from right here, you can pass through right and left grand and promenade half. What they don't say is you can pass through and square your sets your home. Our next, so 
Okay, so rather than do that, we're going, we're through, we're doing through an a activator number one with a, with a touch a quarter beginning. So we did a touch a quarter. Okay, and then we did, we did scoot back. Whoops. I think it has to be two words in this program. So there's the five quarter fraction disguised. Then it was center's trade. We did center's run, same sex is paired. We did a Ferris wheel. Center's passed through. Okay, now I have had callers ask me, why are you always saying Ferris wheel and center's pass through? Not all the activators are like that, but no activator would have you wheel and deal from here. Two dancers are almost turning in place and the other two are in a very tight arc. It doesn't create the wind in the face that helps you blend this choreography with your other choreography. So I always prefer Ferris wheel, centers pass through, and you don't stop there. Say pass through and start through. You say centers pass through and touch a quarter right away. Keep that wind in the face going and you blend over where the activator stops and the next activator or always get out begins. Always call see a blend over the connection point. Okay, so we did centers pass through. Look at the bottom graphic, number nine. This is an activator box. The men are in sequence, start with the number one man, run the bases, one, two, three, four. Start with the number one lady, run the bases, two's behind her, three's opposite, four. They're in sequence, they're all facing corner. This is an activator box. What was our next call? Okay, we went, from there we went to, no, not from here we didn't. I don't think. Left touch a quarter. Setters trade. So we did the left one quarter fraction with activator one. Whoops. Centers run. They are running left. Sometimes it's nice to help. Whoops. Ferris wheel. Centers pass through, activator box, the half sashayed actor activator box where we, where we can again say, you could have said centers pass through, everybody pass through square your sets, you are, you know, you're home. That's where you are right now. Okay. Now we're going to clear. When you do that on this program, you can write it to a file over here in the command line. You can abort the sequence, you can end the sequence. So we'll just end it. So the, then you can name it, but we don't have to do that here. We're, we will abort for now. Okay, you're back to the beginning screen. Look up left, your second item is head start. Oops. Oh, this was the always get out. We don't have to show that again. Okay. Now, now this is the act. This is the act of, uh, from the starter where we get from squared set to an activator box without going to a corner box. We did. I don't know. You don't say heads again in this program. Pass through. Separate around one to a line. Pass through. Girls, actually, it's, the call is actually centers. You turn back. This is an activator box where the dancers are all halfway across the square. So we did 
our specialized get outs as the boys are on the outside, we did touch one quarter. Now before we did an extend right and left grand. Make sure you can see that. You see how number fours are going toward each other number and number twos are going toward each other and number one and then one and three are going to the outside to face each other. You could say after, after the touch a quarter, you could say to as to get out here, well, that's getting a little too more complicated. Not really. We'll go boys, circulate, girls you turn back, and that's our specialized get out from that activator box. And you see what the resolve is, promenade home. You're going three eighths around the square. So your get out would have been called as touch a quarter, boys trade, girls turn back, promenade home. So it happens very quickly. It's a surprise. And it's a bit of a wow, and they've got a few steps to let the brain relax before you start calling again. We are not able to do any of the non-symmetrics in these program, in this program, or intaminations. But the documentation you, re you receive, uh, Mel, have you already emailed that out to everybody? It'll be attached with, uh, I'll be attaching it here. I've also managed to put just the non-symmetrical stuff in terminations uh, so you can actually follow the flow. There's a few questions I, I've got here for you on, on what you've got so far, but I'm gonna save those till the end because I think you're probably gonna be answering the questions. Yeah, yeah. we're almost to that We're almost to that point. So- Mike, I think there is a way you can do asymmetrics in SD, but there's a little convoluted for this program. <laughs> Well, convoluted, I probably understand better than regular, but uh, they're probably not right now. You can teach me some other time. I would love to. I would love to do that. What am I doing here? This is the documentation. The supporting documentation goes into much more explanation about this. It is an excerpt from my caller school syllabus. Okay, so let's go to the contact page. Yeah, I've, I've now posted that in the chat. Okay. We're going to the contact page. There we go. I answer all emails, but sometimes I sometimes I miss them. That phone number, uh, she got dyslexic on me. My number is actually 480-480-204-0110. So 480. That I, I'm, I can answer a text message much more quickly. For one thing, I get an alert for it. So let's go, to, there's one more screen, I think. Okay, we're going to final thoughts and questions. My final thoughts are, Mel's gonna, gonna email you, he'll tell you what he's going to do with this stuff. Then we'll open it to questions. But one of my final thoughts is, you notice that we've done a lot of pass through in your home, centers face in in your home. We did a right and left grand in your home. My own personal opinion, and it is a very, very strong opinion, is the more or the less often that you can call Alaman left, right and left grand and promenade home, the more excellent your calling will be preserved, preserved to be. Think of all the Ferris wheels, and even if you're calling mainstream, spin the top, spin chain through, Think of all the extra calls you can use to really mix the dancers back and forth, playing with the same sex and the opposite sex if you're not doing a lot of right and left grants. I have heard C2 dancers say they like Alaman left when they can be home. They may do the two hand slap, but they like it. I've heard mainstreamers on the fifth right and left grant in one tip look at each other and say, here we go again. So I have a very strong opinion on that. Please avoid at all costs, except in the very, very, very early days of beginner's class, Alaman left, right and left grand and promenade home. That's my opinion, enough said. Mel, you said you wanted to take it from here. Uh, I've got a few questions for you. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Do we need to bring up SD caller or? Um, no, no, that's, that's fine. I think most of these you can answer pretty straight. So if you want to stop the share there. 
Okay, we can do that. Okay. Um, oops, where are we here? Okay. Um, okay, the first sequence that you referred to when you say quarter, is that swing through boys run Ferris wheel centers pass through? You said change any fraction on the swing through. Is that just the first part of the whole swing through? On the first part of the swing through, uh, it gives a little more explanation in in my in my syllabus chapter. You're going to send to everybody that the basic module that underlies the activator is swing through, boys to run Ferris wheel centers pass through, but we take swing through and we split it into its two parts. We step to the wave, and the first part instead of always turning half, we turn any fraction we want or don't, or we disguise it with a scoop back or we turn half, but we, pl we play with other people. That's how we vary the fraction, then it centers trade. That completes what the swing through would otherwise do, but with much more variety. Now you have to say centers run instead of boys run, but the basic, mo it, but it's all based on the, on, the co on the module you just quoted. Okay, and that was followed with the, if I do a touch a quarter, centers trade, centers run Ferris wheel. I don't get back to a corner box. And I think you've answered that already, meaning it's not a corner box, it's an activator box or a corner grouping from there. Everybody can swing their corner. It's an activator box. You don't need to always get out at the end of an activator box if you're in a singing call and you want to swing the corner. You have to make sure your timing is good. Yeah. You don't want them getting home 25 beats early and you don't want them 25 beats late getting back home. So the timing is important, but the choreography, uh, a lot of callers use it more that way because they don't need the always get out. They can create any, any activator they want as long as they're facing their corner in sequence at the end of the activator, they swing and promenade home. I think you've just answered about four of the other questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> activator box, corner box, or sorry, corner box sequence. Are they all corner box groupings or corner groupings? Does this work in corner lines as well? No, it doesn't work in corner lines. A, cor a corner line by definition has a phaser where it's an in-facing line, standard couples, all dancers in sequence, all paired with original corner as if you had a corner box, zero box, and you did a star through. That is a corner line. To get that from the activator system, you have to complete an activator or complete the starter. So you're in an activator box and do half, the first half of the always get out, which is star through and out facers trade. Now you have a corner line, but activators only work from activator boxes. From boxes, not lines. Okay. Um, next one. Oh, for non-symmetrical, is this always for corner groupings as well? Just the formation sequence and relationship, but the arrangement is not really important. Is that correct? Arrangement is not important. It is automatically provided. And yes, it is always a changing of places with your corner or don't. Okay. That's what this non-symmetric is. And if you notice, you're only five calls or so, about five calls from being able to swing your corner and promenade home. Then you can always have them chain home afterwards. What I, my very strong objection to most non-symmetric choreography is it is a very long sequence and one third of the way through, half your floor breaks down two thirds of the way through your, your floor race down except for one square. Now you've got nine more calls to do while everybody stands and watches so you can complete it for one square. That horrible negative does not exist with non-symmetrics created this way because you're only five calls away from getting out. Um, activator box, any eight chain four box where you can swing your corner regardless of arrangement. Is this, again, again, is this mainly used for singing calls? If you do, I have heard 
Uh, in fact, it's on a Collar Lab tape. In a seminar I did at a Collar Lab once, and Jeremy Butler took the microphone and said, personally for me, it's very useful for singing calls. And he, and he did his part of the singing call and showed how he used it. Because as long as you've finished an activator, you are facing your corner in sequence and you swing her. And dancers are not accustomed to doing a Ferris wheel, half sachet, and pass through and swing the girl in front of you. They are not accustomed to that. They are not accustomed to same sex as Ferris wheel, centers pass through, swing the person in front of you. They are not accustomed to that. It comes as a surprise, but a very doable surprise where nobody breaks down. Um, activator box. I've got this one. Girls on the outside, boys in the middle. Um, that extend right and left grand. That leads to a wrong way grand. Would that just be the what you start would do? Out facers, etc. Always get out. You, in order to do a touch a quarter and extend and right and left grand, you have to have the boys on the outside. Yeah. Now, if you have that situation. You, because I don't believe in wrong way grand after an activator because the activator is so, the choreography is so different in some dancers' minds, you don't want to do a wrong way grand here. So what you do is you touch a quarter, then you scoot back. That puts the boys back in the middle of the wave. Now you extend and it's a normal right and left grand. That's a good point because I did not cover that in the presentation. No, that's fine. Um, there was a comment here, uh, Colorama will do the asymmetrical stuff, but it's not a free program. There's a comment I'd like to share that came up in discussion, which was uh, one of the students took your caller school with the activator method, a new caller, went and called his first dance after using that system and the dancers were absolutely amazed at the choreography. His only thing was he wasn't paying attention to the arrangements. So rather than pass through wheel around, uh, he was calling right and left through at the mainstream level half sashayed, but everything else worked perfectly. And the dancers were amazed at how much his calling improved. And Good to know. Uh, sorry? Good to know. Yeah. And there was uh, one other comment. Uh, they don't want to give their name, but. Uh, do you remember the squirrel song from one of your schools? Yeah, I wasn't the one to do it, but I do know a couple of callers who call that, and yes, I remember it. That is that that was a hoot. Okay, so those are all the questions. That's, a Missi that's the Missis that's the Mississippi squirrel song. Yeah, it's I, I, I song. It's one I love. Yeah. As well. Okay, that's all the questions I have. I did run uh, a number of this through, uh, like from your presentation up to the asymmetric intaminations for a, a follow through walkthrough so that you could discuss if you wanted to see it with the actual body flow. But I think right now uh, we'll leave that for a second until after we open it up for, for questions because there's a few people that will probably have some questions or comments. So the floor is open. Uh, if any of you have any questions for Mike, please speak up. You can unmute yourselves. Good questions, Mel. No, they're not mine. I wish they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to everybody. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Mike? Well, I was just going to make one comment, having used the system, is that you just take the time to learn each of those activator streams with those variables, take, take one, the first one, which is turn any fraction, center straight, centers run Ferris wheel. And, and use that in lots of different ways until you get comfortable with it. And he's got about 11 different uh, uh, activator starters, like, you know, th that does different things. So, and I don't know if he's developed anymore or not, but take one at a time and use it and you'll see what kind of variation you can get in your calling. Terry, I think that's great advice. And I know I, I've gotten word back that you have you used this at, at appropriate moments. The answers are really happy with the way you do that. So I've, I've gotten I've had people come back to me and tell me that. So yeah. Now the for instance now I have a lot of activators. I only presented activator one, and I don't remember all the numbers of them. But like I know the number two works with spin the top. It's turn 
up to a right or left wave, turn any fraction with your corner you want them to do, center's trade, spin the top, after which you call a hinge. Now you have to teach them who the leaders are, because leaders are the ones who have their back to the center of each box on each side. A leader is a split definition, identification. And when they turn back, they're facing their corner. Yes, you can swing them. Yes, you can do more activators. So number three actually is a turn, turn a fraction, center's trade, center's run, bend the line. Now we pass their wheel and deal and we go from there. I know there's one in the set, there's two in the second book that work with a chain three. How often do we call eight chain three when it's not to an Alaman left? In this case, from an activator box, you're gonna square through three, centers pass through, put centers in. One activator says cast off a half, the other activator says cast off three quarters. And another two or three calls and you're in an activator box. So there's a lot of, that. If you, if you do it a little at a time, like Terry suggested, it will over time expand your toolbox immensely. Uh, yeah. I Sorry, I was just saying, if I understand that correctly, even if you're, if you're using this system and you do run into trouble for whatever reason, uh, setting it up into that corner grouping, you can pretty much take it anywhere if you maintain that grouping and establish that activator box within four or five calls. Is that correct? Yeah, well, the activator box is like a, the acti an activator is like a module. You have to understand the variable and use the exact same fractions. So when you're in the activator system, unless you really, 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 really know what you're doing, stay in the activator system until they're home. Yeah. Now use one of your other systems. So for instance, you could use, you could use the Jerry Story thing. You could, where he likes the right-hand lady, you could take him over to the right-hand lady box, do an activator, the always get out, which puts some face in your corner, the, not the corner, but out of sequence, square through three and trade by, and you've done that win in the face thing that Jerry Story likes for your Alaman left. You just have to remember, I, I do it from the corner, facing the corner, because you can really confuse yourself big time if you don't stay with one thing until you really, really, really know the system. Right, and the system, the activators actually build on themselves. Like you, in the first one, you only have one variable. The variable is the fractions. You can turn a quarter, you can not turn any, you can turn five, you can turn four, you can turn three, whatever fraction you want for that initial fraction. That's yeah. just one. Everything else is the same. Centers trade, centers run, fares run. That part is the, so you don't have to memorize as much stuff in order to be able to use that activator in a lot of different ways. Very well put. So, yeah. Mike, I got a question. On your okay. dolls, is the is the bump, is that the front of the doll, the bump? Yes, that's, yeah, we tried to put big noses on them so you can see which way they were facing. Well, your, 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 your dolls are wigging me out because the numbers look like they're backwards to me. Oh, <laughs> so that's that's what screws me up here. Yeah, don't worry about which way the number is facing. We worry about which way the nose is facing. So, are there any other questions for Mike? You need to tell them where they can find your books, Mike. I'm well, getting there. Okay, Mel, go ahead. You take you take the lead there. Put the screen. No, we're not sharing anymore. I was going to ask you, Mike, how many books are there? I have book one and two. Is there any more? No, just one and one and two right now. I haven't done it for a while. I've had people ask me to write a plus one, but if but if they don't, the callers don't know how to use it. At, at the, a lot of these callers are basic. When you get to spin the top, it's a mainstream. When you get to centers in and cast off, that's a mainstream. Um, for instance, that there's there is a corner there's a corner box zero box activator box centers in giving you an inverted line. That's how I teach centers in. So the cast off is everybody turning around the handhold with their corner, and then we teach them circulates from that formation. That is the initial teach on centers in and cast off for me. And then with the callers don't know how to use that, I really felt 
that if I wrote, for one thing, if I wrote a book on plus, there's activators that exist, but you start changing the fraction on relay the Ducey or spin chain and exchange of gears, and you have dramatically increased the difficulty level. So no, I've kind of let these two books do their thing. So thank but you. Mike, if you, if you if you know how to put it put in equivalents for certain sections of you know like the right and left through, uh, or any anything our sequence of calls to uh, make the equivalent work, you you can use the plus calls for different things instead of the slide through. A load to boat works just as well if you're in a normal line kind yeah, of thing. Certain, right. So for certain calls, it does work. I'm just saying why I really didn't write a plus book. So, um, Mark, I'm glad you have both books. Um, have you worked? And I have both books. Have you have both of you worked activators from book two? Yes. Good. I have a, I have a dumb question. The, the only dumb question is one that nobody asks. Please continue. Okay, uh, so um, it, you do a, uh, let's say you do that that first activator you had from the uh, zero box, box the net setup. Right. And, and then there is uh, one, uh, one act, uh, one, uh, uh, do you call it an activator when we're gonna resolve or the get out, the, the always the get out? The activator takes you from an activator box to an activator box. Okay, so the, uh, so there's the always get out Right. And then, uh, so is the, uh, and I guess the always get out works from, from any activator at all? Any activator box, the always get out always works. Okay. Now, so, if, and, uh, and now there, there might be another uh, activator box that's, uh, that's somewhere else, like the, uh, you know, head square through two with the corner, um, uh, the, not the corner, but the right hand lady uh, box there. Well, that, that's a right-hand lady box. That's not facing the corner. So if you, if you started from there, you'd have to remember what type of, of box you started in because it's not what we call an activator box. Now, you can't you can make it work, but you have to know how to get out from there. And that really complicates the issue. Is the, uh, so if I, if I were to do that, if I were to go head square through two, and then I were to do the, uh, that uh, active, uh, that activator with the uh, uh, touch some quarter um, centers trade centers run and so on. Uh -huh. when, when I was done with that, would I be back at the uh, would I be back at the uh, right hand lady box or would I just be somewhere else? You would be somewhere else mostly. Okay, there's this. There's a, that's a square through one. So go ahead have have the centers pass through. Now. You might end up in the, in this kind of box. You might have them as if you had done a touch a quarter and roll to face. They still, in other words, if you started the activator system with dancer, with number one boy face number two lady, and number one lady facing number four man, that's the right hand lady box. But you always come back to that. Now you got to know where you are to get out. Now he did the half fraction. He just did a swing through. So yes, go ahead, centers pass through. They come back to here. But watch what happens. Mel, do this for me. Touch a quarter. Centers trade. Centers run. Ferris wheel. Centers pass through. So you see, you still got number one man facing number two lady and number one lady facing number four man. This, it's still a right hand lady box. This is still a right hand lady box. That's what we did before. We did, okay, let's do But this. you'll have to have a different get out. Yeah, here's the point. Let me, let me create something that, that, that's a little, okay, do this. Touch a quarter, we'll do it again. Just do a touch a quarter, centers trade, Centers run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. Now this is a half sachet right hand lady box. 
Yeah, you keep coming back so to the right. The only safe way to remember how to work out of here. Well, they, well, an activator brings you back to the box in which you started. So the question was, that is always, does it always bring you back to a right-hand lady box? And the answer is no. This time it brought you back to face the right-hand lady. But they're, half sash, but they're half sashayed. This is not, this is not a right-hand lady box. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the question was, you're always get out. If I did the always get out from here, which is star through, uh, those facing out trade, so I'll just do a trade. Which would be everybody in this case, yeah. Right and left through, slide through. Now they're back to the right hand lady box. And now I can do from my right hand lady box my resolve to a corner, which is the half chicken block or right and left through, half through trade block. Right. You could do, from there, you have to remember that you're across the street from where you need to be for your Alaman left. So it's uh -huh. got to be right and left through pass through trade by, or it's got to be a square through three trade by. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you know what you're doing, you can put them in the right hand lady box, do an activator, get them back to the standard couple formation, and then take them back across the street for the other man left. Yes, you can do that, but it's very so, uh, easy to get lost. So, so just to recap, I could, I could uh, put in, I, I can go to some other, uh, a right hand lady box instead of box on four box then I can do the I can do an active uh, just get out and I, you're breaking uh, right hand let's see does this work better oh uh, yes one, two, three. okay sometimes the uh, uh, holding down the space bar I've heard doesn't work all the time all right so let me let me go by that again um, so we so let's say that we uh, uh, instead of doing the uh, normal uh, heads pair off and box them out, we did the uh, uh, heads uh, square through two or star through and pass through, however you want to do it. And right. so now we're going. So now we do. Uh, now we do um, one of the activators. I, I guess it doesn't. Uh, well, uh, what, what I would prefer you do is do one where you don't have a standard couple at the end. So just do the one quarter. Do a touch a quarter. Yeah. Mel. <laughs> centers trade, centers run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. Now you've just done an activator beginning in the right hand lady box. This is not a normal resolution from here. Right. So, but we're in a, uh, so, uh, but we're, but we're in a, uh, if, if we do, if we do the universal get out from here though, Will it bring us back to the right-hand lady box that we started with? Yes, that's what Mel just demonstrated. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, that's what I. All right, that's what I. It just takes me a few times through to <laughs> get the point. Okay, thanks. Okay. You bet. Mike. Yes. Would it work? Would it work if you actually were in a true right-hand lady box where they're in sequence before you start? Yes. In other words, do a. From a corner box to a pass-through trade by rather than a uh, square right, well, they're through. In the they're, yeah, they're in the right-hand lady box now. Well, so, I thought a right-hand lady box was when they were in sequence. I think this is an outer sequence right-hand lady box. Is that okay? Correct? So, I mean, I'll do a right, right and left right. Through. I, I'm just I'm just going to interrupt to clarify for a second. The the terminology right-hand lady box is an established Bazar state, which is the formation arrangement sequence relationship. What we're talking about is a box. In, with a right-hand lady grouping or an eight chain four with a right-hand lady grouping. For those four dancers that make up that right-hand lady box in any grouping where they're in sequence. So that's what we're talking about with the right-hand lady box, right-hand lady grouping in a box. What, uh, what he was asking Mel, I think was from a squared set, you did a heads star through pass through. Yep. He would then have them do a right and left through or the equivalent. Yeah, which would then there. give you the right hand lady box in sequence. That's correct. So from here, if you wanted to be in sequence in the right hand lady box, you could have everybody do a right and left through. So why don't you do that? And this is Alan's question. He was asking it from here. I think I called the right name. You want the always get out here? 
No, I just do the do an activator and then demonstrate it from here. See if it works. So, so the the short answer is that any any activator followed by the activator resolution is a zero or, or a technical zero. Oh, it's zero. It's well, a zero. I, I do, you're using see, it's, uh, the technical zero, then all that, that has to do with module calling. If you start using those terms to describe something in this system, you can easily get yourself confused or have been misconstrued by someone else you're telling it to. So Amel, did you, did you just do a touch quarter centers trade, centers run Ferris, centers pass? Uh, yeah, I, I did a two back quarter. Okay, so now you are, if you remember, you had an in, an in sequence right hand lady box when you started. So then we did an activator. Now you have, now unless you want to cite your way out and there's always that possibility, but within the system, you now have to do the always get out. So let's start through. Outfacers partner trade. Right and left through. Slide through. And now you're back to the right hand lady box in sequence. You can pass through trade by an Alaman left. Interesting though, if you have this kind of activator box, you can say, you can't type it as fast as I call it, but you're gonna say, pass through trade by, pass through trade by, pass through trade by, Alaman left. Can, can I, all the, it, just, just a thing that I noted there, you notice where you had the, Alan added the right and left through to put the right hand lady box in sequence. Yes. Okay, App, if you're using the always get up, if you remember you added a right and left through because we're not changing any of these arrangement groupings with the standard. If I add a right and left through to put them out of, or in sequence, I can drop the right and left through from the always module to put them back out of sequence. So instead of doing right and left through slide through, I can just do, and there it is. And you'd end up here. Yeah, so you added right. the right and left through earlier in the sequence. That's the beauty of right and left through when you're using standard things, you can put it, you can move it around within the sequence to make it feel different. Depending on what you want to do next, Mel, you're right. That's a good point. Alan's point is also well taken in that if you go to the right-hand lady box in sequence, you are now in the Jerry story, wind in the face, pass through trade by Alan Man left. When you finish resolving to a, from the activator box to the right-hand lady box in sequence, you started with. Did that, Alan, did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you, Mark. <laughs> So you can, uh, so you can, to some degree, besides just varying the things that the uh, that the uh, uh, that the that the get out uh, uh, or the the activator says you can vary, you can vary things. Basically, you can do equivalent things in the uh, you know to substitute equivalents all th through all of the material as long as you understand really what that what you're doing. Correct. Yeah. And and certainly you, you don't want to forget that you've got to get out of the activator system before you finish, yes. Yeah, again, unless you really, really know, really know where you are. If you put them in the right hand lady box in sequence, you can do an activator or two, bring them back to the right hand lady box in sequence with the always get out and then do your own thing to get out. The risk is your sequence gets too long. Yes. So there comes a, there comes another Mike Sikorsky opinion that if your sequences are too long, well, here the, then you have less wows you're creating during the tip. One thing about the activator system is staying within it is they're short, you get your wow, go back to something, calling something you and the dancers are more familiar with. And you don't do... If the dancers are new to this, you don't you don't use it in the first two tips. Tip three, tip four, tip five, maybe you throw in one, maybe you throw in two. And again, like good seasoning on a on a meatloaf, if you will. <laughs> yeah. So what what well, I've done, sorry, what I've done here, Mike, is I've just gone through your um, handout presentation. Mm-hmm. 
And I, although it's a long sequence, what I've done is I put in the comments about where the trades are or where the activators are. So it, this, this is just so that you could actually see what was going on. So if I understand this okay. correct, I'm just going to pet that back to normal. Very speed. good. Well, well, one of the reasons I wanted to use just activator one was I wanted everybody to see all the variety you can create with just one activator. And this Terry, how many are there? Like 10 of them, 11 of them? I've forgotten now. This is all activator one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, all, that's just activator one. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to make this little caveat. Some of these guys are talking are very experienced callers about trying to go over to the right hand lady box and all that stuff works. But for you newer callers, if you just stick to the corner box activator and then work those activators with those modules, if you get the book, it, it, it explains it in great detail what the variables are in each one of those activator streams. And you can string those together and create very uh, good choreography that can give you total control of the floor. Okay. Uh, Janet so grabbed both activator books and it appears there's eight activators. In the first one. Is this, is this book this one is or book two? two? This is two. Okay. Yeah, there's, could we see another, uh, could we see another there's activator? Eight, there's eight activators, activators in each book, so there's a total of 16, but I would strongly suggest that you work from the corner box, build your activator, get them out, and use your right-hand lady box for more familiar choreography. Because you're not going to use activator system all night long. You're not going to use modules all night long. You're going to do a little bit of side calling. Maybe you got something that you want to try. You're going to read it um, for a sequence or two and build, build into it that way. But with the activator system, until you really, really, really know what you're doing, stay with, stay with the corner pairing for that system. Use your right-hand lady pairing for your more familiar systems. Are there, uh, are, are there on, on the other activators, they start from other, uh, they start from other formations, I guess? They all start oh. from facing the corner somehow, in sequence somehow. I see, okay. You, you but, can, have, but, but Chris, he does have other starters that get you in, in, in into the activator stream and so that it's not just your generic pair off box. Remember, we, do, we did show one of those from a squared set, we did a heads pass through, separate around one and make a line. We did a pass through wheel and deal, putting the girls in the middle and the girls do a U-turn back. Now they're in an activator box with same sex partner pairings. So you can create a different look, put them in a different spot in the square with a different starter. Yeah. And he's got yeah. some start he's got various starters in the books as well of how to get into the system. Cool. That's your base module. This was the activator, which is the touch of you're replacing the first half of the swing through with the touch a quarter. Right. Touch a quarter, centers trade, centers run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. That's an yeah, activator. Can you stop right there? Can you stop right there? I did. One of your earlier questions, so can we touch can we touch a quarter and extend? If, if you did that, you'd be doing a wrong way grand, but you'd start with your original opposite lady. So I do not, uh, no, let's see, would, because here, do it, do a touch a quarter. Oh, I, you know, I'm going to have to, <laughs> oh. I, I, can't, I can't modify the sequence. Do that. Okay, does everybody see that if we did a touch a quarter, we'd have our corner, but the boys would all be on the end of the wave, waves? Do we then see if we did a scoot back, we'd have the boys in the middle of the wave. That's where you can extend and right and left grand. So touch a quarter, scoot back, extend, takes me right to the right and left grand. Yeah, if you want to do a touch a quarter, extend right and left grand, your touch a quarter puts the boys on the outside, just call it scoot back. Yep. That fixes it. So uh, so the, the, the sequence that you're talking about here, so what we did was we did some kind of starter, we did an activator, um, yeah. and now, uh, and that, and is it that, uh, the touch a quarter extend possibly needing to fix the, uh, the, uh, the sachet, is that, um, is that another, uh, universal get out or is something else? 
No, uh, from the activator system, here's the way, here's the way it's structured. From the activator system, if you start in with facing your corner with either a get in, a collar lab module, get in, collar lab, get in, or you do a starter, as Terry says, you don't you don't end up with a normal you don't always end up with a normal couple pairing like the one I presented. You do a starter. And then you do your activator. You've got to do the always get out to get out. The always get out always works. But if you have certain types of activator boxes, like same sex pairings, you have different options for these specially those be special activator boxes. So those are those are additional additional streams that go with uh, with with particular uh, with with particular uh, activators. Right, Chris. Chris, basically, what it is instead of the always get out because of the the, the specific activator box you're in, there's other get outs that work. Like if the boys are on the outside and the girls on the inside, you touch a quarter extend that works. The star through uh, outfacers partner trade right and left through and slide through always works, but there's other get outs from those positions that can add spice and variety to that. The same thing if the boys are on the outside and the girls are on the inside, you can start through and the boys circulate and everybody promenade home, you still get there. There's just different ways if you see that on the floor or on the fly, you can make them work. The yeah. always think, get out always works. I think Mike and Terry hit the nail on the head right at the beginning. From here, this is an unusual situation. The always works star through leaders trade right and left through slide through will take you to the corner box. Yes. Once you master that, there's little additional things that you can do. So from this this position, touch a quarter, scoot back, extend right and left ramp. That's a wow module that you can add on. And it's like learning a basic modular system or a basic zero system. You start small, you learn your basics first and you build as you go. And as you go through the system, you'll find more and more and more variations that you can add. And when you start doing equivalents to right and left through, you're adding even more variety without making any changes. So you build from the small beginning into a bigger repertoire. This entire sequence is just off that one activator module. And there's eight in the first book, and I believe five more or three more in the next book, and it just builds. But with three activators, you've got, well, with one activator, you've got, without making changes, about 40 some odd different combinations you can do without actually repeating yourself. With two, you're up to 100. With three, you're up to 6,000. Yeah, there's eight activators in book one and eight activators in book two. So there's 16 different activators. So I'm, I'm just going to finish going through this so that you can see what's going on. This is the first one which took us to this activator position. But they're, well, all, still, yep. they're all still facing the corner. So I'm now going to, as Mike said, you can do this symmetrically, replace the first half of the swing through, but we're going to do it with a left hand system. So we just touch the left hand wave and it cast off three quarters, the same thing. Centers trade, centers run, Ferris wheel, it feels uphill, centers pass through. Now before you go on, Mel, this is another special type of an activator box where they can say pass through right and left grand. Yeah. Or they could say pass through in this case and square your sets. So you've that's got what you learn. That's what you learn to see when you've used activators, the activator system, so much that you can tell where they're going to end up three calls before they get there. Yeah, the, the three you've put so far is the always, which is sorts them all out from a half sachet activator box is a pass through to a right and left grand, and from a same sex couple is a um, touch a quarter, get the boys on the outside, extend to a right and left grand. The boys are in the middle, you call extend right and left grand. Yeah. If the touch of quarter puts the boys on the outside, you say scoot back, extend yeah. right and left grand. Okay, but it's still, you from here, you can swing your corner and promenade. Right. And that, that, that's how I actually look at it. If I can say swing your corner and promenade from a box, doesn't matter where they are, they're in an activator box. Correct. Okay, and then uh, we're going to do another bit with the left here. So the left hinge, that's replacing it with just a fraction, a quarter fraction or a left touch a quarter, if you will. 
Mm -hmm. um, and again, centers trade, centers run, Ferris wheel. Now I've got same sexes. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to change it without changing where anybody is using a box to mat, which is the half. Now, since the definition of box to mat has them hold right hands and retain it, you can go ahead and use the right hand again for the next call. So that's what you did. Yeah, and then, so this is using that five quarter fraction, which is the two scoot backs. And then I'm going to finish it, centers trade, centers run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. And that takes me back to the corner box, or if you wanna really get technical, I've gone four times through and it took me exactly back where I started from. Yeah, if, you, if your activator box is a corner box, you can go ahead and say man left or swing. Yeah, you can say man left. And then, you and then, you say, then you say right and left grab, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then promenade home. <laughs> okay, so then if I do a box than that, now I've just created another activator box. Whoops, sorry, let's just undo that. That's no, right, let's pull it out of it. Okay, and now we're going to chain hands, left touch a quarter, same kind of thing, but I'm doing exactly the same thing, left hand, right hand. And here now they're in a non-standard arrangement, pass through, you turn back, does exactly the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Now, sorry, I'm just going to go back here. Okay. After that pass through, you turn back. Um, this is where you said if you're doing, uh, you can insert zero modules. So if you have a, a special module uh, from a corner box or something like that, if you're doing equivalence, this oh, is where this, I, this is this is not where I said you can use a special uh, a module. This is a if you consider a module from an activator box, they won't work. You're going to end up calling right and left throughs with a girl turning the boy. Yeah. Uh, you're going to do star through and have them facing out. And you're going to call right and left through, and it's going to, you're going to break down. This isn't where you do a module from. You get halfway through the always get out by calling this star through. Yeah, I can't change it, but okay, very quickly. Uh, you would do a star through, and then it all be looking out. Call everybody partner trade. Now you're in a corner line. Now you do a line zero. Line zero. Okay. Bring it back to that line, finish your always get out. Okay, so I did a trade bar. You took him to the right hand lady situation. Yeah, and this all I did was just a two couple zero on that. There's a flutter wheel. Sweep and a sweep a quarter. quarter. And now I return to my. Activator. There you go. Leaders trade, right and left through, slide through. Okay. Now you can do a module. However, you've put a lot of calls in here. I think I wouldn't even have called that slide through. I wish I would have said, oh, I'm a man left in your home. I, like I said, that's why I had the stops in the comments each time. All I did was just string them all together because it was easier than typing and cutting and pasting each yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I get, I appreciate what you've done. Let me say this, uh, I, and I have made this statement and on uh, at, at a Caller Lab seminar a couple different times. So it's in people's collections and it's there for history that if you have to tell your dancers to make a, to form lines when they break down, that means your sequences are too long. Yeah. You need to be getting six or seven or eight wows per tip. That means that many resolutions. That means your sequences don't last more than 12 calls, except on the very odd situation. You also need to keep your tips a certain length. You don't want one patter tip to be six minutes and the next patter tip to be 18 minutes. There's all kinds of things you do to keep the dancers there through the last tip. And this interesting stuff with the short sequences and get them home a lot for a lot of wows and nobody standing around very long, that all works into it too. That's all. That, that's all built into this activator system if you use it correctly. What And what I, I've noticed that, and I really like it is when you set it up, your always get out takes you to a corner line. 
half one, half of it takes you to the corner line. Yeah, right, it takes you to the corner line before you finish that sequence. If you have a corner line wow get out that maybe is the focus movement of your chip, you can use the system and use that get out. If you're, that is correct. If you're you calling the activator system, if you're in the corner box in the sequence, you've always got the touch of quarter extend right and left brands. If it's one of those other formations, you've always got the I can do the standard corner box, swing through boys run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through to the Alaman left. I can do any corner box module and insert in a, in a standard corner box or a right hand lady box if I'm doing that and bring him back. There's so much room for flexibility and variations in what you already know without stepping out of this system just by adding a module in the right places. So like for instance here, you, you presented in your workshop that uh, you said the corner line module, but it's just a line to line module, which was the right and left rear Dixie style, which I, Correct. I, I absolutely Correct. love this module by the way, which is the Dixie style, the tag the line from the Dixie style face right, chain down the line, we're back to the corner box and then we finish it, slide through, or sorry, right and left through, slide through, there's my corner box and the get out. And just for you, Mike, right and left brand. <laughs> my head's gonna explode. Because that's, that's the end of the sequence. But anywhere through that, that's why I type that out. Anywhere through that, if you look at it where the stuff is in, in brackets here, you can set yourself up for that always get out, that always immediate, that always whatever, for any of those formations, you're never more than uh, for the always get out for uh, five movements away to total resolution or two movements away to a total resolution using the activator system. And I want to say there's one cool feature about using this activator system. Have you ever been to a dance where the caller said, if you want to, but you don't have to hang this with your corner? You can use this activator stream system and do that and make the dancers think you're doing something absolutely fantastic and the always get out always works. So that way you, you might have been at one of my dances and heard me do that. <laughs> so as I said, the floor is open for Mike. Mike has graciously granted us with our time. We're now uh, 15 minutes over our actual allocated time. But still open and thank you mike for your presentation don't um, worry mel it's not beer 30 yet oh it's never beer 30 or it's always beer 30 depending on where you are <laughs> um i i have posted in the contacts in the chat and i'll be sending those out and i'll be sending those to mark to post up on the website as well but uh if you want to get mike's books um, books one and two are available. They're, uh, are they still $25 US each? They're $25 a piece, but I have to calculate the shipping depending on, on, on where you live. So that has to be added. And I can do that and then, and then quote you. And then you mail me a check or we do it by PayPal. If you do it by PayPal, send money to friends or family. Otherwise, they're going to charge me a commission on the, on the transaction. Yeah. So within that, um, excellent books and excellent resources to have. They go into a lot more detail than what's been presented here, and it follows through the system. It is a very, very flexible and a very powerful system, and it's an excellent tool for in your toolbox. If you're a module caller, it is a phenomenal tool for your toolbox, uh, especially if you work a lot of zero modules. But as Mike was saying, you have to be very careful uh, looking at where you are with your modules. The one I put in that sequence that was from a same sex setup, it works because it's a non-gender zero module. But you have to be careful if you have half sashayed calling things like right and left through as one caller that gave his anecdote, didn't notice he was calling great, but that's what he called all night. I've also put up Mike's website, which is www.azcaller.com or azcaller.com for you Americans. Um, which at the website, you can get a hold of uh, Mike's personal recordings, his music, and also Mesa, it's a link to Mesa, Arizona Productions uh, for all Mike's square dance productions, which are coming out. I think they're all sitting at about $6 each. A lot of really good new music up there, Mike. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Mel. And the floor is open for any questions. Can I have you put one more thing in the, in the chat or in the sequence you're going to send to people? Certainly. One thing I coach people against, and 
uh, if they can, can avoid it, uh, which Terry's heard me do this, and Mark's heard me do the, this, and that is we called a uh, that module which finished with a uh, tag the line face right and chain down the line involving a courtesy turn. The next call was then a right and left through involving a courtesy turn. There's a lot of circular there with, uh, and that can be tiring for the dancers. That's the that kind of stuff without being under control tends to send people home early. So there is a way to avoid that on that module. So if you could, the module would be first the right and left through Dixie style to a wave, tag the line all the way through face right. And instead of chain down the line, you say girls trade and bend the line. Yep. And you now, if you do want to do the right and left through, you're not getting two courtesy turns back to back. Fixed. Who's up? I have an observation that might be uh, useful for, uh, well, for everybody, but new callers uh, too, because they're trying to figure out, gosh, there's all these systems and modules and site and activators and everything. The, you can use uh, this, um, uh, I think the general idea here is you, you, the activator system is designed to give you modules that are of an appropriate length. So that's one, one of the features of it. So you might want to just alternate. So you use the activator system for one or two things. So maybe you use the module system separately and then go back to the activator. However, you're gonna mix them up like that. That's one way to use the different systems with each other. The other way is in the middle of the uh, activators and, and at certain other places you can use, you can insert certain kinds of zeros and so forth if you kind of know what you're doing. The, the, uh, the, the, app, the thing I wanna add is that uh, you can also do this with the uh, mental image system. So if you're if you're a mental image caller, um, it's uh, very easy to uh, to switch between uh, in the mental image and this. So you know you, you call the uh, uh, like that corner uh, right hand uh, rather box uh, module we were talking about and start over there and do your activator, do your get out, and you're back in your it was all a big zero, and from there. Uh, since you knew where you were on the mental image system beforehand, of course, head square through two isn't very far away from any kind of system that you're using. Um, but uh, you, you could pick up at that point with mental image to call out of it, or you could use modules that you know are done from the right hand uh, lady box or so forth. But so this works with, uh, with not only a lot of the other systems that were mentioned, but it also uh, works with the, uh, with the mental image calling. So that's, that's pretty handy. Good comment. You know, I've, uh, with Mike, when he started out, when he put that book out originally, and we talked about the different dances, and I've used these calls after the teaching a class as we get towards the end, and the people are amazed that they're ending up home without even realizing it, it works great. It's a good, it's a good finish up for the night. Okay, John. Good comment. John, Thank you, John Jurgen. Do you have a comment? Do you get that? I did. Oh, okay. Thank you. Now I've got John Jurgen's. Is I don't know if you're trying to get in and say something. I'm just looking for you there, John. Where are you? Uh, John's just trying to say goodbye, but it's not working for me. I can't. Oh. Tell you. <laughs> So Sorry, I'll I, see you. I'll see you all later. Catch you later. Bye. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, you bet. Okay, I've reposted um, the activator presentation for uh, excerpt from uh, Mike's caller school that was provided. I've also put that excerpt in the comments down from the contamination sequence. Mike, if uh, Janice can send me a copy of your PowerPoint, I can give that to Mark for also posting up, which would be absolutely phenomenal. If you're okay with that. Absolutely. So as soon as we as soon as we close out here, Janet will send that on to you. And after she changes my phone number to be the the real phone number, so she has me in, in east of Phoenix rather than in San Jose, California. I was just thinking, you know, as a recruiting ploy, you might 
keep, you know, just keep changing the phone numbers to random phone numbers. And if enough people get calls about square dancing, they might get interested in it. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 20 people randomly calling me about square dancing. Well, that sounds good. Uh, Mike, I want to say thank you very, very much for coming in and explaining the system. There's been a lot of questions and comments about what the activator stream is. And in all honesty, I am not nowhere near qualified enough to even present on it. I know the fundamentals of how it works, but I'm not really there to present on it. So I'm very, very grateful for you to do this. For new callers, um, as was said by Terry and Mike, start at the basics, start with one, learn one, learn how to use it and build from there. There's two books available from Mike, uh, 16 different activators or activator formations, I, I guess, or activator positions that you can start from. So you- you're, seen different activators. Yeah, just activators. Um, the reality is you're probably talking well over a billion different possible combinations when you start throwing them all together, especially if you incorporate modules or zero modules with it. It is a very, very powerful system, as are all the systems. And if you know what you're doing, they work together. But start small, build big. And, and don't make your sequences too long. I thought we had good questions today, Mel. I enjoyed it very much. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank Thanks, you for coming Mike. up. I'd like to remind everybody, next week, we're going to be here with Chris Stacy, who's going to be talking about yeah, you may be able to call it, but why the hell would you? Uh, he has a much better definition title on it, but it's, uh, uh, it's a session that I'm really looking forward to because it's one of those things that always seems to come up in the discussion when we get into choreography. I can do this, but, oh, you shouldn't do that. Nobody well, ever answers the questions why. There's, there, there's also kind of a lot of, no, you can't do that, <laughs> and, and why, because there's a, there, there's a lot of things that people wonder uh, when, when they're looking, when they're reading the definitions, there's there's a lot of assumptions in in written into the definitions, or I should say, not written into the definitions, and is very easy to read them, and then think, oh well, that means I could call this because that's what the language would seem to suggest. But uh, but you know, no, not really, uh, because there's uh, there there's some sort of uh, un these rules are either unwritten for sure, or they're buried somewhere. Uh, in, in, in all that text and you won't, you won't notice them. They're usually not written with the calls. And uh, so it's, uh, if you went to the challenge uh, groups uh, thing when they, when they were, they did something entitled uh, uh, how to read the definitions. And this is a little bit like that. Um, but uh, anyway, it'll hopefully it'll give you some, uh, uh, some clues so that you don't get lost in the, uh, call uh, certain kinds of uh, silly things. And there are some things that's like, yeah, no, you, you can't really call that, but well, you could. Um, and, and we'll talk about those too. Yeah, I, I kind of like the way Yolanda described it. Hopefully Chris is going to give us a written copy of all the unwritten rules. So yes, I, I, I'm, I'm in the process <laughs> of, uh, I'm in the process of trying to uh, distill them down and uh, uh, make it uh, organized enough that, that, that I can actually give you a, a little list. But we're going to go we're going to go through some examples and show how some of those rules apply that, that might not be obvious and some of the some of the trouble you can get into. And hopefully, if I'm still up and around and not in the hospital, Guido will be with us the following week, uh, talking about reverse engineering your singing calls or reverse engineering your pattern. How to look at it for if you want a movement, how to set it up and how to incorporate it but working backwards. Uh, I have no idea how he's going to do that because I have yet to figure out how to get Taminations to work backwards. But uh, I'm sure Guido, if anybody can figure it out, you can. And we're looking forward to that presentation as well. I'm moving checkers. <laughs> so a lot of good stuff coming up. As always, we'll get this sent out. If you'd like a written copy of this or you want this emailed to you, please send me an email. Uh, most of you have my email address. For those of you that don't, I'm just about to post it in the chat. Um, I, have, I have one thing uh, to Mike. Um, you don't need to write a plus book because if a plus caller hasn't understood the basic and mainstream calls in your first two books, he doesn't need a plus book. 
You know, I, I agree with you completely. I really do feel that a really good mainstream dance is the basis of a good plus dance. Yeah. Um, well, if I've worked through your books, um, as, as you know, but you just didn't like my, my language, my presentation. <laughs> um, the, the thing is with, if you work through the, through the book, and you understand the, the system, then you can apply it in any program. Yeah. Maybe you, in, in, in plus, you need to be a little bit, you need to be a little creative instead of calling a spin the top, you need to call a fan the top. But if you call it touch a quarter fan the top, it's about the same thing as a, a spin the top in your system. Yeah. Yes. So you don't need to write a plus book. It's, it's not necessary. <laughs> if, if a caller hasn't understood your first two books, he doesn't deserve <laughs> uh, that his laziness is supported by you. I don't think you have any problem with the English language. <laughs> uh, I, I love it when somebody is very oh. direct and very straightforward, Guido. And what, we what, what I meant your presentation. What I meant with language, uh, remember I've sent you a presentation I did a couple of years ago. Oh, and yeah. you wanted me to change language. No, I still teach the um, activated system using now a virtual corner box. I'm still using that word because over here in Germany, it's much more easier uh, to give them a terminology. They know, they know the corner box. When I say uh, we have a virtual corner box, they can relate to that. If I give it a different name at the very beginning, it's something that I have to learn. I stick with something they know. So um, it's, um, and see, I've, I've understood your system. I don't use it all the, all the way and all the things, things through, but I'm using it and it's especially a good tool in class. Yeah. Over um, here at least, I don't know about the States, but over here, it's a good system. <laughs> well, it, it really works with calls that are, are very rudimentary, in my opinion, to the to how good we train or how well we train our dancers. It's a very important to be able to cast off three quarters properly for spin the top. It's important to be able to circulate from all kinds of different waves and lines. But it's important that we know on a trade we must turn, the dancers have to change their direction. So there's a lot of important things that get reinforced by using the activator system within a beginner's class. Not all the time, but for certain applications. So That's one of the a things well, well taken right. comment right there. Yeah, one of the things I really like is it sets you up with different arrangements. So you can have half sashayed, boy, boy, girl, girl, or what have you. The sequence, like even looking at activator one, you've got four, five different sequences of movements that you can do from different kinds of setup arrangements that are all simple. You really have no choice, even if it's different. It's only if you stop and think about it that you're going to hiccup because the flow is so nice on them and you flow one to the next that you're going to be doing that left-handed uphill Ferris wheel without even thinking about it. And it feels so different. It feels challenging, but you haven't done anything that you don't already know. And that, that's, that's what I really like. The, the beauty of the system is its simplicity that it adds that arrangement variety without being difficult and gets you right back to normal standard com comfort quickly. So it, it's really, really good that one. Anyway, that is um, what we have for today. As always, if you have any topics or suggestions you would like to see, we've had a few questions and queries about um, writing singing calls, presenting singing calls, singing call music. I uh, might get you back on some of that, Mike. I might get a few things along that. Uh, I'm always looking for ideas and presenters, so click me an email, send them to me, and uh, as always, I'll leave the chat room open for a while if you just want to chat or pick brains. Mike, thank you very, very much for coming in, and thanks to Janice for doing all the technical stuff that you don't know how to do, 
<laughs> and, which will uh, be all of it. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of that, I want to say thank you very much to Mark Hart, who is my technical guru on this that records the sessions and posts them and posts all the information out. So thank you very much for coming, everybody. And uh, the room is open for anything you want to talk about. Thank hey, you. Mike. Go hey, hang around real quick. Share a screen real quick. Sorry? Can I share Thanks a screen? Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. I want to get Mike's approval on something. We're waiting for you to share. So while we're waiting, Mike, if you want to figure out how to do that asymmetrical in SD, you can just email me or text me. Is that showing? Yes, it is. Uh, can you can you pencil in a beard? <laughs> yeah, I probably could. It, it, it you probably just pencil it in and look like it, like drawing a mustache on you. That's the basic. I got to line up the text a little bit, but I wanted to catch you before you left. That's a <laughs> thumbnail I was planning on using for the video. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down, Mike? Oh, it's a definite thumbs up. <laughs> All right. It almost looks like a bulletproof vest. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. <laughs> yeah, where, where'd you get that? I'm going to need that next week. <laughs> the internet I, Chris I fully expect yours to be very controversial because we have a lot of brand new callers that will ask questions well the definition says I can do this and we've got a lot of very experienced callers that say well at challenge you can call this so there's nothing wrong if you can do it at challenge you should be able to do it at basic which I hear all the time so I, I fully expect that you might just need a bulletproof vest Oh yeah, no, I, I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, um, in in this can in this sense, uh, I have to quote Dizzy Gillespie, who once said, "It took me all my life to learn not to not what to uh, to learn what not to play." <laughs> For me as a call, it took it takes me all my life to learn to know what not to call. Yeah. That's, that's, that's along the lines of uh, what's this space there? The light bulb inventor. I had his name in my head there. Um, Edison. Edison, yeah. He says, I haven't failed, or I haven't in or what is it? I haven't invented one thing. I've invented a thousand things that I know just don't work. <laughs> yeah. Mel, without yes, being offensive, do you mind changing your background? It's been distracting me all night. <laughs> There's <laughs> just too much going on in the background. Yeah. Um, okay, hang on a second. I'll, I'll get one just for you, Alan. Thank you, mate. <laughs> this, this, this is my background for resolution. Uh, where is it? Uh, if I can find it. Uh, and now all my background videos have disappeared. What the heck is going on here? I finally got you unprepared. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> I'm going to say bye. Mike, thanks. Uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, See you, Landa. <laughs> sorry, it, it just told me that my Zoom has quit. I have no idea if I'm even still on or not. You are, are you on. Any... Okay, it's told me my Zoom has quit unexpectedly. Uh, it did this one time. We were still an hour and a half in Zoom but I'm not going to uh, fiddle with it just in case. No, don't do anything. Uh, some of the, yeah, some no, of my fine. buttons and whatnot. Don't touch it. <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to because last time I did that, everything went all haywire. But Alan, I'll have a different background for you next. Thank you very much, Mike. That was an excellent presentation. It was really uh, mind stimulating. I'd not even heard about your system, but I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Glad you enjoyed it. I have only been uh, looking at this activator system for a couple of weeks. And uh, what I've observed, as I put in a comment, is that it uh, maintains the group, partner, corner, opposite, right-hand lady, whatever it is, and each activator, that is. Uh, it maintains sequence and it um, maintains quadrant partner. 
throughout. Knowing that allows you to start with other arrangements other than the corner grouping and know, of course, where you're going to be, uh, as well as to use it mixed up. Um, having finished a activator, in order if you wanted to run another one and provide a little more variety, assuming it ended in a wave, what you might do is a square through two or a square through four sort of thing so that you end up facing out, you know, bend the line past the ocean, center straight, swing through, and you're right back into sequence, but working with different people. If you learn to blend it with your other choreography, that's how you sort of craft uh, the, the system and make it your own. I just don't want people calling right and left through with same sexes turning each other at mainstream kind of thing. Oh, I, I, I don't even like that at plus. Oh, it worked. I don't know what happened there. My, my system closed down and then it just restarted. So uh, Mark, I don't know if, if, if it's still recording for you or not. Last time it happened, it sort of crashed part way through. But at least it waited until after the presentation was finished. And uh, Alan, th there, there's the basic resolution technique for new callers. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it would have crashed the recording. I, I, we've been functioning all the time. Yeah, it, it's something in Zoom. Um, we had a power outage and I lost the internet. I had no internet whatsoever, but I was still on Zoom and I have no idea how that worked, but it was, we were still on, we finished the rest of the presentation, but I had no internet here for about the last 40 minutes of what we were in on. So it's something built into the Zoom program. Um, no idea how it works, but it worked. So I'm okay with that. That's what I wrote to you. Uh, Zoom probably has its own WinSock, yeah. which makes its own internet connection and it's not dependent on what else is there. As long as there is juice flowing, it, it maintains its internet connection and it's not dependent on Windows or Apple or whatever system you're using. Yeah. It has its own thing by itself. I've noticed this a couple of years ago with another software uh, program. I didn't have any access to the internet, but mm -hmm. the software was updating itself. So, it made its own internet connection. It's, 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 well, it's, the internet would still have to be up for that. I'm sure it's using some streaming protocol over UDP and it's probably not yeah. using TCP for the main part of it. But the, but I bet when, when you say you lost your internet connection, that maybe what happened is um, uh, you lost somehow your DNS resolver, which could fail at, at a number of different points, depending on how you're, the router at your house is configured and everything else but uh so that that would have that would have caused trying to bring up web pages and stuff to fail but you but the internet was still there and you could and because you know if zoom was still working at all then the internet was really there but some some part of it was yeah. broken a lot that's what he's saying it's like once you have an internet connection established with zoom unless you lose total power you may lose your provider connection but that internet connection is established for that linear connection, as long as there's power feeding through it, it'll stay there until either you lose total connection with the internet or you lose everything else. It's, it, it's not dependent on the provider or your computer. I don't know how it works. Uh, as far as I know, uh, what I've been told is it's something the Chinese have put in so they can spy on us, but uh, who knows? <laughs> um, I really I, like I, your background now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I often get instability on my internet during the session. Uh, are we supposed to be using the dial-in numbers or, or are you just working via the internet? Does the dial-in numbers give you any more security? The, di the dial-in numbers, we provide those so that if uh, there's a lot of people that um, dial in on their mobile phones or they have a dial-in tablet connection. Uh, right. That's what that's there for. But ideally, you should be able to just click the, the Zoom link and that will bring you to the web page. If you don't have it, there's a lot of people that, um, there's a couple of them have found that they can tether their mobile phone to their tablet or to their computer if they don't have an external 
connection and they're out in the field somewhere, they can connect to the tablet via the telephone, dial in and, and establish that connection that way. I have no idea how that works, but it works for some people. So that's why I, I, I stopped putting the dial in and I was asked to put it back up there because there's a lot of people that use it. But if you've got a computer with the internet connection, just click on the Zoom hyperlink and that'll bring you right to the meeting. That's what I've been doing, yeah. So we seem to have digressed away from square dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to say I've enjoyed this very much. Um, it's gone a bit, a little bit quickly over my head, so I'm really looking forward to the uh, recording, so I can do it at my speed and stop it and start <laughs> it and look at it again. When you when you go through the recordings, go through them. Have Mike's uh, handout with you, and go through it at the stop and go, and then you can actually look at each sequence. Just remember on that where. You have the choreography. What you, if you're used to watching that, it's a good idea to get your own dolls out and run them through the sequences because the formation and the way that they're set up is at the end. That's the end point of the choreography that's presented. So if he says swing through boys run, you'll see the dolls or the checkers in a two-phase line. So as long as you keep that in mind, it flows really, really well. And you can run it through with your own checkers, which really, really brings it into your perspective. Yeah. Well, it was just when everybody's saying a whole ream of things, it's gone too, too quick. I can't, my mind can't follow it quick enough. Yeah. So, but it has been very good. Thank you very and much. That, that's, that's why, like, the, the thing I did with the tamination sequence there was essentially, uh, Mike, that was your sequence, the way you were talking through, through your presentation up to where you went asymmetric. Uh, and although, in retrospect, I see exactly what you mean, I should, I should have done it as a whole bunch of series of shorts rather than just a continuation of one to the next. It would have made a lot, lot more sense. It is not one sequence. It's, a, it's just the flow of how it goes from one activator to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. I didn't want people, and what it does, particularly for the newer caller, it allows context. Yeah. It, it always goes from where it was before, unless it says, okay, we're gonna start from a squared set now. Yeah, no, I realize that, but I never put into those notes that, you know, you don't wanna have a sequence this long. I've always, thought, <laughs> I've always thought, even before I started learning the call, that I like the short patterns. I like the accomplishment of making it home. And the more times I made it home, the better I felt I did. And then you get, I go to dance and there'd be some of these other callers and they call these real long patterns tips and they'd only get you home once or twice. And... The longer the pattern, the more odds of the square breaking down. So I, you call I, shorter, they make it home correct. more, they're more happy because they feel like they accomplished a lot better. Your background looks like my last beginner's class. <laughs> I really like what you said earlier. Like I'm, I'm actually a bit on the other side of the fence with the Alaman left, right, and left grand. I like a right and left grand or I like a promenade, but it's usually... I try and set it up so it's halfway. Your right and left brand will get you to home. That's your wild get out. I don't like a lot of at home resolutions. That's just me. And that's just feedback I got from the dancers. But what I do like is a good mix of here's the surprise get out, you know, extend right and left brand. You may have a quarter promenade or there's a home or there is an Alaman left and a right and left brand and, and a promenade home. If I have a lot of intricate complex choreography, I may do an Alamand left to a right and left grand. So you've got a half promenade home. That's just to give the dancers a break, but it should never, ever, ever be. And I agree with you hundred percent, exactly the same thing all the time. Every resolution to home is not a surprise. Every, your home, your home, your home, your home is not a surprise. Every right and left grand, oh, that's getting boring. Mix it up, give it variety. That's oh, one, one more thing. You said we digressed from square dancing? Absolutely. I don't think we did. Since COVID-19, the internet has become a very big part of square dancing. It's the only place we can do it now. Oh, now we're getting into degrees of separation. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, Mel, I think you and me are socially distanced. Are we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've got South Australia and Vancouver between us, at least on my screen. <laughs> yeah, in New York and Chicago and Albuquerque. And... 
Now, as people come and go, the boxes change. Like I said, at some points, it's like playing Hollywood Squares from hell because you never know where anybody is. <laughs> so, Mel, have you worked with um, extended screen so that you can see more people while you're doing a presentation? Is that what you've been doing? Or? I can get up to 49 people on my screen. Um, just like I've got two screens going. I've got one which is my speaking screen and my presentation screen, and then I've got the main screen which has all the controls and up to 49 people. And uh, you know, some we've had some of these where we've had over 100 people come in. So I've got to click one, two, and three on the on the uh, the sessions to see who who's actually in which which box on the screen. But uh, I've only got the two monitors going. So oh, I've got my laptop and one monitor going, which is why I say um, at the end. Please don't just raise your hand because if you're on page two or page three of the, the I don't see you waving. So how, yeah, did, I, how did you get more than 25? That's all I get is 25. Do, you, do they have different package levels or something? Um, I don't know uh, what it is. What is it? it says video settings settings. I think part of it might have to do with uh, how fast your computer is. Uh, uh, for example, right, on mine, but I can't get any. Uh, I can't get any artificial background on mine. For example, it just says, yeah. "Oh, your computer's not." I, and I, I think the number of uh, ones it'll show at a time may be related to that. Similarly, did you did you purchase the program? Or are you using the free version? No, I purchased it, but I remember what Chris said. I remember reading that it it uh, it depends on your computer how many how many uh, people you can see on a window. You, yeah. you have to have so many cores and so much so much processing power in order to be able to do forty nine and do the do the backgrounds without the um, uh, green screen. Okay. I have, now I got to go buy a better computer. All, all I know is my wife bought me a new computer because she was sick of the one that I had. I, I paid over 10 grand for my computer back in uh, 1997. And I was still using it when I moved here to Australia. And the other day I said it was kind of hard. I and finally uh, Alan, who, if you can see him, he's in the middle of my screen there. Uh, I went down to Canberra a few times. I think he got sick of halt, getting his turntable out of mothballs or me pulling my turntable because I had to use it on the, the power converter. So he finally convinced me to switch some of my music over to digital and buy a laptop to actually call square dancing because it was more convenient for him not to haul up the big ass turntable. <laughs> So uh, I, I only switched to using a computer. What was it? it was about seven years ago, Alan? Something like that. About that. that seven that, or eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I, I thought I was the last one. <laughs> no, actually, I I the last dance I did down in um, uh, in Albury Wodonga. Uh, sorry, the first dance I did in Albury Wodonga, I did with my turntable and records, and that was only a few years back. I still use my turntable and records when I go to some of the dances. Um, but now I'm, I've switched over to the computer. I've now become more comfortable with Square View and haven't got everything converted yet, but I'm still working on it. At least, at least, not, at least I got Ghost Riders in the Sky on. on, on <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, that is, that is my favorite record. It is the one that I get absolutely the most requests for. I've never gone anywhere where somebody hasn't asked me to do that one that I've been before. Cool. I do believe there's been recorded a lot of times. I think that is the best instrumentation is, ever is, done on that particular singer. I think I've got a lot. I've got a lot of copies and Mel went through them to find the specific one he liked doing. <laughs> yep. Poor Barbie. Yep. I think you've got about seven different versions of that, Alan. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, do you know this song? Yes, I do, but not that version of it. <laughs> I think I think the funniest one was um what was it? Uh is it Agio? The Hallelujah. The the version. What, what what's Hallelujah on? There, there's two versions of that. My buddy Weaver did one of them on one of his labels. Oh, there's three versions of it then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the one that Tony Oxendine did on, I can't remember the label now. It's either Acne or Agio. But, oh no, it's on Ego. But uh, yeah, got up, I watched two people get, oh, do you know Hallelujah? Oh yeah, I do. And they put it up and they were both using different versions of the song and it wasn't the version they played. It was a very interesting presentation because they just kept going through it. 
that's a really challenge, good challenge for a young caller who you get up to give him a guest call and you say, oh, I've got the music on my computer, I'll play it for you. And uh, it, it's completely strange to him. He's never heard this one before. Mm. <laughs> and uh, had that. The, well, we, 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 used, yeah, we used to do that. Uh, I used to go to uh, a pub where I was in Canada when I was living there. And uh, one of the big things was karaoke night. But it was always, it was the one night we had about an hour, which was karaoke challenge. And you put your name in the pot and it didn't matter who it was. Sometimes it'd be, it'd come out duet. So you'd pick two people at random that have never sung together. And then they have to do the song that is picked up at random that you've never done together. And you don't know what's coming up. And uh, we had uh, one, which was the, the duet theme from Phantom of the Opera that I had to do with this other fellow. And that was really, really interesting. But sometimes I've seen square dance callers do that as well, which is karaoke calling from hell, where neither one of you know what's coming up and you just, somebody randomly clicks a song and away you go. That's something to do only for a fun night. Never do that in front of a crowd unless they're in a really good mood. <laughs> You'd have to admit the last 25 years has changed, like electronics has changed square dancing just so much. There's just so many things that have shifted, um, including what's happening now with the Zoom. Uh, you just wouldn't have thought about that when you first started calling, would you? When we had a plastic in our hand and a, and a mm. turntable, how much it has changed. Oh, yeah. Well, I know one thing I had a, at least we don't have to deal with the record skips all the time. I was doing a dance down in, in Massachusetts and the record started skipping. I said, great. I took that needle off, I, I frisbeed the record against the wall, put another record on, put the needle on, that started skipping, did the same thing. <laughs> they went through three different records and finally turned it, turned the, uh, or lifted the needle and finished it a cappella. And I was amazed because they were concentrating on what I was doing. A caller actually come up and asked me what that record was because they really liked the music transitions. <laughs> <laughs> It was, you know, you sometimes watch the, the caller's presence on the stage is part of the show, but it really put into perspective, you know, you get callers that get up there. Once they start calling, dancers really don't care what you're doing or what you look like on the stage or what's happening because they are focused on the dance. They're focused on having fun. And as long as you keep moving and they're having fun, you can get up there. You could actually do a complete change of clothes half the time. And unless they're working and looking at you, they probably wouldn't even notice that you were wearing a black shirt when you started and you're wearing a white shirt when you ended. It's been more than one time that I was uh, I, I calling a challenge dance. And uh, back in the uh, pre-computer days, my uh, cards that I was reading the material off of were in fact index cards, the, the big ones. And um, uh, <clears throat> more than once I'd be, uh, I would have them in a little pile. And uh, more than once uh, I, I would, drop the card and things would go sliding and now my material's on the floor i still remember what the next two calls are because i'm reading ahead some 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 bending down on the floor trying to retrieve the card picking it back up and uh and, and trying to you know put it back on the lectern and and uh and keep going without missing a beat um and that uh mostly uh the, the times when that happened I, I was able to succeed at that although one time uh, when I when I picked the thing up and started reading again, I was in the middle of a different card accidentally. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, know, Mel. Do you do you do you remember Chanshova? I know in Germany. I, I believe so. I know the name. Uh, he attended one of uh, Al Stevens' college schools, mm -hmm. and. Um, he only had, for a week-long caller school, he had five records with him. And um, all the puzzles said, everything you have, I have. And he used just five records the entire week. And nobody, nobody noticed. He was, using, he was using the same record for different singing calls. He just knew the chord patterns and he sang a different song to whatever record there was. Al, Al did a, an excellent session at one of the schools and um, another one was done by Tony down at uh, Ken Rattucci's school, but they took a lot of patter records 
good, like really good driving patter records. And it wasn't a matter of picking out the boom chuck or picking up the boom, boom, boom. It was dealing with the melody lines themselves. And in a really good patter record, what you can find is there's usually about four or five different underlying melody lines that you can use because the same chording, the same structure, the sec same arrangements, you can pick up as the instrumentation. So, you know, especially if you're using anything with a gospel type background, yep. you can find five or six different gospel songs that you can sing to exactly the same, like the theme and the, and the, the, uh, the melody line in patter record. It is an excellent exercise, especially now with the technology where you can isolate different, different parts of the line actually see what's in that underlying music. And for callers that use their voice a lot um, to actually carry the melody line with their voice, it's a really, really good skill to have. Um, it's, but, you know, it's, it's not harmony, but it's creating those harmony with the, with the actual music presentation so that you can get a whole bunch of diversity with different music. Now, years ago, you're, you're talking about records and of course, some of us have been around long enough to where that was the state of the art. Mm -hmm. And I was dancing to a caller named Marv Linder, who back in the day didn't have a good crowd if it wasn't 40 squares or better. Yeah. And he had recorded Louisiana Man, oh, yeah. uh, Louisiana Man. A lot of us, you may remember that. And his figure was square through three hands, corner, let his swing. And he would be doing that. But he would turn the record over to the called side, lip sync it, and during the second figure, like, or when he saw nobody was looking at him anymore, he would very quietly turn the mic off, lay it down, and he'd stand on his head. <laughs> he was standing on his head when I heard the record go, square through three, square through three, square through three, Honest to Pete, he was standing on his head when the record started skipping or repeating. I've heard, I've heard that. So it was actually his son, Kim, that taught me how to call. Oh, really? Yeah, we were both. Cool. He was in the American military over in Germany. I was in the Canadian military. And uh, he was he was stationed in Karlsruhe. And uh, he, he's the one. He was the caller for the Schwarzwald Panzers in Lahr at the time. And he's the one that actually got me interested in calling. So now we're back to the small degrees of separation, Mark. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it. No, I, I remember Al Stevens uh, at a couple of his caller schools, but there was him and um, Bob Moffat was another one that was over there at the time. And they gave me the greatest encouragement as a new caller. I've, I've told this story a couple of times, but was when I went to my first ecta callers meeting and there was over 200 callers in the room and they were all sitting there and you had the panel and there was al and there was bob and there was uh, kenny reese and, and dave prescott and a few others that were up there these these were the big names at the time and they were talking about god knows what the movements were but it was advanced and challenged stuff and i was look and everybody in the room was nodding their head and there was a discussion going on and i had no idea what the hell they were talking about so I politely waited and at the end I put my hand up and says, I'm sorry, I think I'm in the wrong room. I'm, I'm a brand new caller. Um, is, is there a meeting room for new callers? Because I don't know what you're talking about. And Bob Moffat and Kim just started doing that very, that very slow, sarcastic clap. And it was the boat bloody time because I, apparently I wasn't alone. It's just nobody wanted to seem like they didn't understand or they didn't know anything. And they didn't want to interrupt the, the masters, as it was, uh, to ask a question because they didn't want to feel bad. Me, I don't care. I, I, I look stupid all the time. I figure if you're not willing to look stupid, you're not willing to be a decent caller because you're going to look stupid at one time or another in your career. Dave Prescott is still calling and he's still one of the greats in Germany. Yeah, I, I'm in contact with Dave a fair bit. I've been trying to get him to come up here, but to... Uh, uh, come on here and do a thing, but he hasn't got back to me. He's been over a couple of times. Um, Jaden Frigo has brought him over, I think, once or twice as well to South Australia or to uh, Victoria. Yeah. He meanwhile has over 50 years of calling. 
Yeah, well, he's, I think Dave's now, he's now in his late 60s, early 70s, isn't he? Dave, Dave Fresca was born on, in 1953. Yeah. October 3rd, 1953. Well, talking about looking stupid, I was calling out of town one of the first times and it was hot and in the middle of my singing call and I had them all lined up, you know, page one, page two, page three. Somebody changed the fan and all my words, my lyrics went flying through the air. What you know, ended up on the, on the floor and here I'm trying to read them on the floor. And of course they didn't land in the right order. So I, <laughs> I thought as long as I can keep that square going, it, it's fine, right? But I must've looked so funny. <laughs> Well, that's why I always say if you're going to write, write big because you never know what's going to happen. At least you can see it at a distance. Yeah. yeah. One of the good things about computers, though, I will have to admit, I did one of my outdoor dances, uh, an outdoor open fun dance. I haven't had a record melt on the turntable in the sunshine. Yeah. Not in a long time. But, but, but the other thing is, a um, couple of years ago, um, I had Brian Hotchkiss at a dance here. And uh, he asked me to do something together. Yeah, I was the MC at the event. And uh, he told me the singing call we were going to do. So I put the lyrics up on my screen. But I changed the title of the of the singing call. And I wondered why my, why my lyrics didn't fit to what Brian was singing. This happens. Yep. It took me about half a singing call to find out which singing call he was singing. I have never happened to me. I'm I'm sure Howard could probably say a couple of things about Brian doing playing little things like that on you. No, mm. he he didn't play. Uh, it, it when when he did the singing call uh, during but during the singing call, I remembered that the singing call he was singing was the one he, would, he told me. I just mixed some words in the title and took, took up the I wrong call. The wrong lyrics up. Well, I, I had it when I went out of town one time and I, I was on using the turntable and for the safety's sake, I'd left my 45s at home. So I figured I won't have to go on stage, right? So one of the callers had asked me what I was working on and he did his tip and then he, told the whole floor, oh, and guess what? We have this brand new caller and she's, and I know what she's working on and I've, I've got it on my computer, on the laptop and I never seen a laptop at all. And why doesn't she come up and try this? So I go up on the stage and I look at it and you know, the intro looks exactly like I've done it. So I'm starting and I've got, I'm used to two or three squares, right? And there's 15 squares. So I've never had such a large floor before. I get the intro done. I get to the first figure and it's in square dance shorthand. Now, now I could read what an RLT was, but at that time I hadn't a clue. So I had to stop the whole floor <laughs> because I said, I can't read this. And the caller that was up after me said, oh, I've got it in regular writing. So I will we'll just restart and you can use my, my laptop. But I had never seen square dance shorthand before. And here I've got 15 squares on the floor and I hadn't a clue what to do next. <laughs> I was I'm um, a, uh, at a regional, uh, regional uh, uh, weekend and uh, <laughs> I, 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 get the, I get some distance into this. Uh, I was calling off a card and I got some distance into this and I looked down and I saw something. I just had no idea what uh it was my own shorthand right and uh but i, I as i said over the mic i'm like so i'm calling along and blah 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 a little bit of a pause and then i said does anybody know what pc stands for <laughs> and uh of course you know people just looked at me quizzically and uh then i just you know called out of it or something but the um it, it took me a long time uh you know like two days later you know i wake up in the middle of the night i'm like oh pick and choose that was pick and choose that's what that was supposed to be <laughs> i've got pc and not pc well i don't have pc but i've got not pc on a few of my uh recording notes for some of the lyrics i might use sometimes <laughs> uh, 
On a serious note, um, I was calling for a group down on the south coast and uh, something fell off the stand and I quickly bent down to pick it up and came back up again. And, and immediately I almost collapsed on the floor from must have my blood pressure must have been low or something. And I really struggled to finish the song because I was staggering all over the place. And, and, and really I had to go and see the doctor after that. And they came to the conclusion, oh, you, you must have um, had low blood pressure at the time. And just the bending down quickly and coming up was enough to completely unstabilise me. And, uh, but, you know, after, after the song had finished and I'd sat down for a minute or two, I was fine. Uh, but it can, it can be a safety issue as well if you drop something on the floor <laughs> as an older person. Orthostatic syncope, yeah. Mm. Never, never put your head above your blood pressure. <laughs> never call any sequence that's too big to eat. I like what, that advice. The, I like that. That's a great expression, that one. One of the nationals um, in Adelaide back a, a few years ago, Peter Humphreys had lost his voice or was having trouble with his voice. Some of you probably remember, and Barry Watson lost it, and they had to do a duet together. So they had cards that they actually held up, like swinging through, etc. <laughs> and they're halfway through it, and um, <laughs> and um, Brian Hodgkins comes along and mixes them all up for them. So, <laughs> so that was quite fun, actually. So, so everyone had to watch the caller then because they couldn't hear them. <laughs> yeah. It was very much stop, very much stop, start dancing, but yeah, <laughs> you I had to had stop and. Read the stage, do the next yeah. call. I mean, read the stage, do the next call. <laughs> it's quite yeah, funny. I've, I've had nights cool. where my voice has almost been completely gone, and we don't have it here. I wish we did, but there's a, a nice little chemical concoction from hell called Buckley's Mixture, which is very popular in Canada and I think through some of the states. And it's basically like drinking a formula of liquid ammonia and cough syrup. And, but it, it does work. It, and even the advertising for it, Buckley's mixture tastes like crap, but it works. And that, that's the way they advertise. And it does, but it does work. I went through an entire bottle of that one night, one of the, one of the large bottles, just, just to get through the dance. And I literally could not talk, but it just gets your throat to such a way. But I tell you, after drinking a bottle of that, it's not, not a good feeling at the end of the night. I think it's about 90% alcohol. That's probably why I got through. No, I, I don't think it is alcoholic. It's, it, but it is like... I got better tasting stuff with you that said. It is. It does. It smells like ammonia. And that's what it's done. It's, it's for clearing your sinuses and clearing your, your cords and everything. But, oh, it does taste like crap. Yeah. It tastes horrible. <laughs> but it works. Yes. <laughs> Well, so it's uh, it's it's the right season now. You should You should take some of that and you should call love potion number nine. <laughs> send something to Trump. <laughs> well, anyway, like I said, the, the room is open for chat. I'm going to minimize here because uh, it's now 11.14 a.m. And I've heard my wife get up and cut the front lawn and she's got the leaf blower out there going. And I unfortunately am not able to do all this kind of stuff because of my back injury. But I have a feeling I should get up and maybe fold some laundry or put the dishes away or something so I don't get in too much trouble. I'm going to bed at 2.14 over here. But uh, Mike, thank you very much. A lot of people have expressed in there. They're really glad to see you up and about again. And we hope you're well, well, well on the way to the mend. And uh, yes, thank, thank you very you. much for coming. And thanks to Janice for putting everything on the screen for you. Thank you. And she will, as soon as we drop off, like I said, she will email the Power, PowerPoint to you for posting whatever you do with it. No problem. What do you want it as a PDF? Uh, you can send it either as a PDF or as a PowerPoint presentation. It doesn't matter. I don't know how big the PowerPoint presentation is. My email doesn't really have a limit, but some of the servers that they go through may have limits, like ten or fifteen meg or something like that. But if when, you want to save it as when, a PDF, when we that's when we do it from a, from the computer on Google, if it's too large, they automatically upload it and provide you with a download link. Oh, okay. Well, that'll work.
because uh, I, I usually just send it to Mark as well. Um, Good. So if you want to just hang on one second, I'll see if I can get Mark's address. Uh, OCCallers.com. Uh, Mark Hart, there we are. And of course, it's not going to come up with his email address. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mel. I'm off too. Thank you. Here. You're welcome. Thank you for being with us. Bye bye. I'm leaving too. There we are. Um, thank you, Mike and, and Mel. Thank you so much, Janice. Um, I really enjoyed all this new information in the chat after. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Truly You're welcome. Appreciate. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so if I send this to Mike. Nice presentation. And uh, Mel, thanks for putting it on. Oh, my pleasure. I'm looking forward, like I said, I'm looking forward to all the firefight for next week. All right, are you going to give me Mark Hart's email address? Oh, there it is. Let me write that down before we drop off here. He's got, he's got two there. Uh, I didn't get it all. It's Mark underscore Hart. At Lucerne Valley, L-U-C-E-R-N-E, -E, Valley, USD. Valley dot USD? No, no, Valley, USD dot org. Got it. So you want to see email it to him too? Yeah, if you would. Can do. He, he does all the technical loading and, and what he's uh, he's he's actually collated on the uh, uh, Orange County Callers Association site and on his own site all the links to the class presentations all the Don Don Beck presentations all of these presentations and a bunch of other stuff as well as some virtual dancing so that it, it's a one-stop shop you can go and actually look at this it's a phenomenal resource that he's, he's spending his time putting up there so my wife said somebody was calling me. I was in there taking care of my dad. Uh, I was I was giving Mike your email address. Oh, okay. Um, Callerpark.com. Yeah, I gave him that one as well. Um, hey, speaking the, of which, can you get rid of the Lucerne the, Valley one? Give me the one you want me to use. Okay, that's the caller mark. Mark it, caller mark. Caller mark. A good one. You can you, when I get the emails from you all the time. Yeah. You send it to my work address, my work email too, which I'm not really supposed to be getting emails there that aren't work related. Okay, so don't okay, send so it to Lucerne, don't send it to Lucerne Valley anymore. Caller yeah. Mark at what? Mark at callermark.com. Oh. Mark at callermark.com. Mark at callermark.com. Got it. So we'll just make send it to you and the mail. Okay. And I'll, I'll send you both. We'll send you both. Can we send them both the digital of this? So I'll send you. I'll send you the the. We we already emailed you though. Though you got the email. You're going to email that document to him.